two, and one. Hello, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Talk About It Tuesday. My name is Alexandra. I'll be your host, where we talk about all things the arts and people who love them. Today, we have a very special guest. We have Phil with us, Twitter. Hey guys. Uh, <laughs> Phil, why don't you tell people a little bit about yourself? Well, my name's Phil, Phil Blevins. Um, let's see, what do you want to know? Um, I'm currently living in New York City. Nice. I am a struggling, starving actor, nice. but, but loving it. Um, yeah, originally from, from Maryland, so I've been on the East Coast my whole life. Um, so, yeah. When did you know that you were going to make, you know, kind of the artistic side of your life a little bit more stable and permanent? Right. Um, still working on the stable part, but like, As we yeah. are. <laughs> for me, it was a huge thing. Like growing up, I always, you know, dabbled here and there. There was always like an obvious like passion for the arts and for mm -hmm. acting and entertaining people. Yeah. Um, it wasn't really like a huge focus for me as a kid or even through high school or anything like that. Um, it, for me, came at uh, when I was entering college. So like 18, 19, kind of then I grew up uh, in Annapolis, Maryland. So that's like right near the Naval Academy. Uh -huh. Huge, huge um, influence on me. Really wanted to join the military and go there. And um, towards the end of high school, found out that like medically for like different medical reasons, I wasn't going to be able to go. Uh, which was crushing and you know as an 18 year old who has like their whole life planned out yeah totally I'm gonna go do this um everything that I've you know worked towards is for this um I kind of had to figure out what I wanted to do instead so yeah had to you know go to a backup college um initially went in and I was like all right what am I gonna do here so I just kind of had to guess for a couple different uh majors of what I might want to do Right. So that, I went in like, okay, you know, my, my dad and grandpa, they're in finance. Maybe I'll do finance, right? Can you believe that? Like, nope. <laughs> yeah, go into the business school and I was like, all right, um, yeah, this is um, interesting. I still find it interesting, but I don't think this is that fun. I don't really know if this is going to be for me. Um, initially shifted to kind of an entrepreneurship route. Um, the, the college I went to had like a little entrepreneurship program there which was awesome. And I was like, okay, cool. I can be a little more creative. And so things slowly started to kind of shift for me. I started to feel like, all right, maybe I'm sort of going down the right path here. So yeah, I started to lean into to entrepreneurship a little bit. And that was kind of like, all right, started a little LLC with my brother. We started um, doing like digital marketing and stuff like that. Sort of like getting that creative, like vid making videos, editing, all that kind of stuff that, uh, I grew up doing just for fun and making little short movies or YouTube videos. That was kind of scratching the itch a little bit, mm -hmm. but um, I was like, all right, I don't know. And um, so I was like, all right, I don't know what's up. I'm also not learning a lot in school. I'm not really getting a lot out of school. So I was like, why don't I try something else? Lean into this even further and started taking some acting and film classes at uh, that university still. So that was like a no brainer once I got into those classes I was like all right yep this is it um and I was like I don't think um I really need school to to really um to go about doing this so I left I dropped out of school as a, like a young 19 or 20 year old kid I said you know told my parents guys I'm gonna be an actor this is me with no experience no training besides like one or two classes in school mm. um so that was kind of where it all started and um I was like yeah you know, I have no training and I, I really haven't done much, no experience, but yeah, I'm going to go move to Los Angeles and, and become an actor. <laughs> <laughs> that's not a bad thing. <laughs> right? That's a good, that's a good thing that you had, you had the, the guts to, you know, just say, okay, well, I'm doing this now. So just so we're aware. <laughs> right. And that's, it's a good thing. I mean, like my last year of high school, I, I honestly thought I was going into the psychology program yeah. and then all of a sudden I, it was like my last week and I go, mm, Your last hey, week. Hey, um, I'm gonna not do this as a major. I'll do it as a minor and I'm going to do theater instead. And especially after talking to the chair of 
the department who ended up being my mentor, mm -hmm. he was saying like, you know, a lot of our students are also psychology majors. So you can just come in here. I mean, you're, you are learning about people, yeah. which is true. It just, it happens. I mean, people change their career on a whim because they're just, they don't want to do that anymore. And that's so okay. So what is it that attracted you about doing acting and film and, and video making? Like why, what, what is it that you feel like really makes you connect to it? I don't know. I think it's just, I think the creativity of it, uh, film in general, I, um, although I, I would love to, to do and get into some theater, I have only done film and television really mm. for the most part. Um, except for when I was like a tiny little kid, but yeah, I don't, I don't, it's a good question. Cause I don't know. I think it's just been there a little bit. I've loved entertaining people. I think I've loved the process of that. I think like I, everything about, it, even if, you know, like no one watches it or anything. Like, I just think that the whole process is awesome. And I, I love the people that I get to surround myself with all the time. Artists, people of all different shapes, colors, sizes, backgrounds, all these different um, amazing creative people. So I, I would say a little bit of everything. I think the whole process is what really draws me to it. Nice. And you're now you're taking some UCB improv classes. This is how Phil and I know each other. <laughs> so <laughs> Jessica and I are currently taking uh, UCB improv classes because you know you can never stop learning. Now that you've done some improv, which is technically theater, so now you have theater training. Uh, yeah, I guess something to put on resume. <laughs> now that you've you've done improv, we're currently in 201. So how does it feel to do that side of the arts it's great i honestly love like the liveness of it and you know it's everything's like in the moment especially improv you mean you have to think on your feed it's really fun zoom adds another uh aspect to it since we're still doing everything over zoom so it's a little interesting but i i don't have anything to compare it to so uh -huh. i think that i'm just like loving it and like you know i wish our classes were five hours long like or yeah. they're only two hours a week so I, I just wish that i could get more and more of it but yeah, it's been really great. Little did I know, you two are, are improv veterans over here. <laughs> <laughs> with a whole channel with like almost 300 videos or something. Oh yeah, we're almost at 300. When the panoramic started. Yeah. <laughs> so, it was just like after two weeks, what do we do? Okay, let's just go to, go to YouTube. Because we just wanted people to have like, we started off with games you could play at home and things like that. So it's kind of morphed into, we had six videos a week. Now we do three videos a week. Yeah. Six videos was was a, a lot of information. I mean, like, like you said, it's the, the process of it. Like, I love editing. I love sitting here for hours and editing. It's not good for your back, but whatever. <laughs> and, <laughs> yeah. It's not good to forget you're here for like four hours. I mean, it's true. The process of it is just so rewarding no matter how many people watch it. I mean, we've had videos that have maybe two or three views, but one person says, thank you so much. It's really helped me. I didn't understand it before. Totally. And, and it's like, well, there you go. At least I got someone, you know, someone yeah. got something out of it. Absolutely. Who wasn't family or friends liking them. <laughs> yeah. And I feel like a lot of people who start, you know, YouTube channels come at it from a totally the wrong angle. And they're just like, let's get famous. Like, let's, you know, make yeah. bunch of like videos. And I think that like passion for it is gonna help you guys like long-term for sure. Hey, and it, those two, three views, all you need is like some snowball effect to kind of slowly build you guys up. I feel like that's amazing. And you guys already have like started to grow tremendously from what I've seen on your channel. What would you say now that you've done some of the improv exercises. So mm -hmm. it, in UCB, it's more long form and herald compared to short form. So how does it feel to like, what, what would you say is something about the classes that you find the most interesting? Ooh, I, I mean, for me, just like, I watched improv growing up, like, you know, whether it be at school or anything. So I, for me, it's just fascinating to see like, oh, there's a, you know, method to the madness in a way. So that's what I'm taking in the most of it is just like, oh, wow, there's actual levels to this where you can break it down and like, you know, you don't have to be just naturally amazing at being funny and improv. Like, all you have to do is just find out what's that weird thing and then like go from there. 
Yeah. So like, I don't know. I, I think that's the most fascinating part to me, especially to, to see everybody in their scenes. I just crack up the whole class. Like, <laughs> it's so fun. It's so cool. Yeah, every, everyone's great in the class. Everyone's mm -hmm. awesome. And um, when when you're doing your, your scenes, you have a, a tendency to do this kind of like, you know, all around like the the straight character of like i feel like this is not okay here but i feel like it works like i or just everyone you get decides to be that weird character yeah. <laughs> but, but i feel like everything works with mm -hmm. it like when we did a scene where i did all the metaphors as a dad and you're like yeah dad the eggs on aisle three are like kind of weird but yeah. I totally work with them I just, I, I tried so hard not to crack up because it's such a real conversation that people would have. Right. And I think that's, that's kind of the fun part also of doing the scenes is that you, you know, you're pulling from reality. It's mm -hmm. like, you know, these people, no matter how strange yeah. they are, you know, these people <laughs> some way, shape or form. You um, always, like slide into this super funny character. I'm like, oh man, why don't I have to try that once? <laughs> I love oh. how you slide into that. The, your characters, I'm like, oh yes, this is gonna be good. Uh, <laughs> I have been told on on many a forum that I am dry, <laughs> enthusiastically <Yeah>. dry. <laughs> <laughs> it works. <laughs> it works. It works. There's a there's a method to the chaos. You do a lot of like film stuff. So do you mm -hmm. do kind of the the sketch side of it? And you talked about marketing as well. So elaborate a little bit on on that. Yeah, uh, well, I guess like picking up from from that kind of uh, when I decided to just leave school, it was yeah. kind of just like um, my the marketing side, like the digital marketing side, slowly started to fizzle out. And uh, mm -hmm. my brother, who's uh, my stepbrother, same grade as me, um, you know, was still going to school and was like studying like engineering and like so like this wasn't like a we're both dropping out and we're gonna you know start running like businesses like left and right and no yeah. wasn't really what it was but it was like a great learning experience so that fizzled out but yeah didn't end up going to LA came to New York because it was I was just auditioning here anyway yeah. and um yeah I, from only thing that I had coming here was like um like student films a couple of short films up and down the east coast um mm -hmm. since I was on the east coast New York it tended to be where I would go and audition but yeah I um it was it was kind of a wild start. So when I dropped out of college, I, I said I would finish the year out. So I finished out the year and, you know, came to New York. I, I went home, grabbed my stuff was, you know, it wasn't even a month later where I was, was taking all my savings as a 19 or 20 year old kid yeah. and moving to New York City. Um, but I was lucky enough to to book a couple things right off the bat. So that um, I don't know if that was a good or bad thing, but it, it definitely um, helped get me some some traction. So that yeah. threw me into the, um, and who knows where I would have gone if I was like, you know, here for years and not booking, maybe I could have gone down more of a theater route or anything like that, um, gone into training way sooner. First summer here in New York, I, I booked a, a feature film and I was totally thrown into to being the lead of this this full-length feature film movie and um it was a crazy learning experience you know it was a, just an independent film um nothing crazy or anything that's like funded by netflix or anything like that but um yeah the the idea of being on set um you know five days a week being the lead of this film having to know your lines having to manage your, your time make sure you're not you know gaining a bunch of weight or like doing a bunch of stuff for a long period of time and really like learning on set that was tremendous for me you know whether or not um the the finished product was going to come out great whether or not anyone saw this that was a huge huge learning experience and you know mm -hmm. mine i had like one or two acting classes from college under my belt so i i i don't know i don't have that's any awesome questions. though no, that's great. Yeah, I mean, that was a great start. Yeah. It's like it's like learning a language. The best way is to just fully integrate, and then you right. can learn I hear that. Like, just go live there. If yeah. You learn the language. I hear that. That's awesome. Yeah, and that's that's how it tends to happen with with um, you know theater and and film and stuff. It's weird. It's like 
you kind of like dip your toes in a little bit and you're mm. like, I don't know, man. And then, <laughs> and then you're in it and you're like, oh my gosh, everything's sparkly. <laughs> like, right. It just happens all at once. And and then next thing you know, you're there until one o'clock in the morning doing sets or, or lighting right. or, or doing a rehearsal or helping someone learn lines. And you're like, I like love this place. <laughs> that exact thing, what you just said, when you just have a long day, you're physically exhausted but like yeah. mentally you're soaring you're like you're so wow, aware <laughs> this is amazing like, i love this like i can't wait to go back and do it again like that's yeah awesome. oh it's definitely like a little high it's it's because yeah. because you can't do it alone i feel like that's the the coolest part about mm -hmm. uh theater and film in general is that there are so many moving parts to it mm -hmm. that you you can't i mean yes there's there's one person shows but you need the technical director you need the production staff you need lighting you need sound you need this you need that you know you you need everything including the audience because the audience is also involved it's 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 just a a fun process but when you're when you're getting ready for an audition mm -hmm. do you have like your process everyone kind of like has their little thing that they do like some someone yeah. said that they uh, before they do a presentation, they smoke a cigar and have a snack. So like, is there any- That's cool. Is there any uh, kind of like process that you have prior to auditioning or going into to actually work? Yeah, after my cigar and my snack, I run yeah. miles and then I I just, I'm, that'll get me in the zone. And As we I all do. Don't shower, I just go right into the audition. So yeah. that's it. No, but- um. <laughs> I'll just cut out everything you say from here on out. <laughs> <That's> a... <laughs> For sure. Um, yeah, realistically, I think it's going to depend on, completely depend on on what it is. Um, if it's a role that I feel like I haven't really gone into before, then that doesn't mm -hmm. take a lot of extra prep. Like I said, I'm not like this, I don't come out of college with a you know acting degree. I didn't like, I'm still working on getting training now, even in my third year here in New York. Uh, uh -huh. But yeah. I, I, um, I, I will say that a lot of times when I do get an audition, it is in the middle of the week and I have a full day at work on set and I'll get home and I have maybe, you know, eight hours before I have to be back at work. So if I want to work out and that's a couple hours, I have maybe, you know, a little bit of time if I want to sleep to try to squeeze this thing in. So I think it just depends on the situation. So uh, if I have infinite amount of time to prep for it, oh, absolutely. I'll do, I'll research everything as I possibly can um, and, and spread it out and make sure that I um, I, I really approach um, every part of the, the scene, the character, everything. But yeah, I, I don't think I have like a set, like cookie cutter approach. Maybe I'll right. get one day. I don't know. That's No, that's, that's totally true though. You approach it depending on what it is. You know, you can't just approach every single thing the same way. It's like a pro you're you're playing the role of a of a person, or you're going in with a certain personality set. You have to approach it differently than something else. It 100% makes sense. Yeah. Of course. What about you? What is your approach? I want to hear. That's so. That's so. Funny. Everyone always asks me right after. I okay. If it's a scripted role. Yeah. I make a playlist, like an actual musical playlist for them, because I just I um. I work well with sound, sound designer. I work well with sound. So it helps me get into that mood. And then I'm, I'll, I'm kind of like ping ponging all over the place. So, yeah. uh, and then right before I get on stage, it'll just be me kind of like to myself. Mm -hmm. um, when it comes to improv, when we do warm ups, we do something physical, like majorly physical, whether it be like Pete repeat, which is just kind of like copying what the person before you did, or um, ninja. Love ninja, and then a verbal game that kind of just gets your brain totally left field, you know. <laughs> um, and then we just kind of like have to like touch each other in a way kind of thing to let everyone know that we're present and then we we just start <laughs> i'll also have a lot of coffee oh. a lot of coffee <laughs> the secret comes out yes the secret it's all caffeine. <laughs> it's all caffeine. um 
It seems like you have like such a tool belt to pull from. Like, I feel like with um, your experience in improv and it seems like your experience in all different areas of theater, you have like all these things, like different. (laughs) Well, the, in, in, uh, I went to NSU and they always suggest that you should do the technical side as well. And I kind of fell into the sound design. Um, so it was, so I did every aspect and I worked at the scene shop. So I was a full, um, techie. So I would build the sets as well. And that was just, it was so amazing to see that side of it. Like I love backstage. I would rather do backstage and be on stage most days because the, the back of the house is like the fun, the fun part of the house for me. Um, like you also have like such an appreciation for every part of the show now. Oh yeah fun question so if i saw you walking down the street and i was like oh my gosh who's that person uh what can't i tell just by looking at you you know it's interesting i don't know if i overthink this or not i looking walking down the street i'm in new york so i'm surrounded by artsy people all over the place i don't Mm -hmm. look like an actor at all i don't think like i don't have like trendy vintage clothing or like you know (laughs) I dress You're like not hipster enough, Phil. Ah, so I need to. I need somebody to teach me or like take me to a thrift shop or something. <laughs> um, so I'm gonna go with that. I don't think you'd really know what I'm into. I look like a jock or like a like I just went from the gym or something like that. Or Makes I don't sense. know. You <laughs> are wearing a baseball hat. Very strange actor behavior. Yeah, I guess I don't fit in with the rest of the art here. So <laughs> I feel like there's a, a variety of people all over. I'm just like messing, but yeah, maybe that. Nice. Hey, if it's if that's what you feel, that is what it is. And then another question, everybody, Phil bought a taco. What kind of taco do you have, Phil? So I have a, there's a situation here. So situation. <laughs> Chipotle in my neighborhood um, is. Uh, a little stressed out at the moment. <laughs> so I ordered online. By the way, they're only accepting online orders today. That's oh. how stressed out they are. Oh my. Um, ordered three three little tacos. I have a burrito bowl. That's nice. That's what it is. But it's got, you know, you got your steak, you got your rice, you got your, your uh, uh, guacamole, uh, a little bit of everything, hot and mild uh, salsa. So yeah. So is that like your is that like your preferred kind of taco? You don't prefer like super spicy? You just like a mild, oh, mildly like spiced. Spice, spice it up. I'll sometimes oh. put hot sauce oh. on the taco afterwards. Yeah. Nice. I feel like um, I'm the guest here, and I'm the only one with the taco. I don't know. That's what is that? <laughs> that's that's an okay thing um, because this is. This is about you, so, no. you know, enjoy the taco. And when you, when you think about the arts, mm-hmm. what, what would you say to someone, you know, who's not an artistically inclined person? How mm-hmm. would you, how would you approach um, them maybe wanting to get involved? Like, what would you say to a person like that? Yeah. I mean, I, like I said, I think we, kind of touched a little bit just like go for it like whatever you think you should try I feel like especially if you know you don't have a family to feed yet or something like that I think you should go for it mm-hmm. um, if it's an actor I usually tell them like look just like get on camera or do it get an experience in any way you can work for free do anything yeah. um, just get started I think so many people have excuses of why they can't, you know, do it. Oh, well, I don't have the time. I don't have, you know, whatever. Like, if you love it and you want to try it, you're going to find a way to make it work. Yeah. So Nice. Yeah. And how, oh, how can people keep up with your artsy-fartsy journey? Um, well, I have to uh, give you guys my personal address. So if you, I'll give you a second to write this down. Okay, hold on, pencil. Okay. All right, everybody. My address is, I'm not going to do it, but you can follow <laughs> me on um, Instagram. I'm at pblevs. Um, and that's my pr- username pretty much everywhere. But, yeah. 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 So anything that you can follow Phil on, we will have linked down below in the description so that you can just find him at a click of a button. And uh, if you would like to 
um, learn more about Phil, just, just please to go, go and do the following, do the, do the liking, do the sharing, do all the things. And I want to say a huge thank you to Phil for joining us today on another episode of A Talk About a Tuesday. Thank you for having me. Thank you, guys. If you would like to take any improv classes with This Is Improv, you could go to www.thisisimprov.com. We teach improv for kids, teens, and adult drop-ins, so you can sign up today. And we also do improv for writing, some sketch writing, and improv for life, and corporate team building. Again, that's www.thisisimprov.com. If you like histories, mysteries, and ghost stories of a Florida, specifically Florida, don't give me anything from like Texas, okay? You can go to Spotify or Apple Podcasts and listen to our histories, mysteries, and ghost stories. If you have a story of your own, please, please, please send it into us. We love hearing about the weird, crazy, and mysterious world that is Florida because it is its own mini, mini universe. Uh, you can send it to one of the emails linked down below. I hope you have a beautiful, wonderful, and glorious rest of your day, you beautiful creature. I hope you also eat some tacos because it is Taco Tuesday. Have a great rest of your day. Thank you, everybody. Goodbye. We're out. We're out. We're out. <laughs>